Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode 665. The Male Orgasm and Testosterone. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin, and today we're going to talk about the male orgasm and testosterone, the hormone, and how they intertwine to bring about how testosterone is needed for a male orgasm. Now, if you've watched any kind of medical videos or if you've read any medical books, you will find that doctors divide up the process of a man having an orgasm into four artificial stages. And if you're like me, or a woman who has had sex with a man, so I have experienced that, or a man who of course knows more than I do about the experience, then you know that the road to an orgasm is not step-wise, you don't go step number one, step number two, step number three, step number four. It doesn't happen like that. I don't know why medicine describes it that way, but it's much more like a, an orchestration, a, a, a musical symphony. It is much more like a process, something that starts here, ends here, may take some side trips um, in between, but it is not a, uh, a true recipe where you add number one, you add number two, you mix a little thing here, and then it, it comes out as an orgasm. That's just not what happens. Now, there are some, some necessary elements uh, to add um, to the process of a man having an orgasm. And the primary element that helps, that actually is necessary for a man to have an orgasm is for him to have testosterone so that he can have sexual desire. A desire to have sex, sexual desire also incorporates thinking about sex, fantasizing about sex, having sex with yourself, whatever. It is basically the thought or the process. Um, That's what desire is. So that's what we're talking about when we say sexual desire. When we're talking about orgasm, we're actually talking about what happens in your brain with your neurotransmitters and as you reach the pinnacle of sexual stimulation and you have a release. It is not, believe it or not, always related to ejaculation. There are men who can have orgasms but not have ejaculation. Most men especially young men, have orgasms with ejaculation every time. As men get older, sometimes those two things separate. It doesn't mean it's not an orgasm if you don't have an ejaculation. So, first of all, some some of my statements in describing this has to do with the feedback I've gotten from my male patients or my female patients talking about their uh, partners. So, um, so I, I'm, it's not a total medical talk. <laughs> so it, in, um, I kind of like, I'm going to digress for a second. I was, I was watching Netflix with my do- with my granddaughter and she's five and we were watching story bots. And if you've never watched that as an adult, you need to watch it. It's on Netflix. It's a, it's one of their, uh, productions. It basically answers questions like what happens when I flush the toilet? How do I hear? What happens when I get a cold? How do I get better? Things like that, which you think you know every detail about. And if they had a, an adult version of StoryBots, I would love to do this talk with StoryBots because it would be so much more fun. 
but it would also be very explanatory. But what I'd like to, what I'd like to, StoryBots basically has little bots that experience whatever we're talking about. That'd be quite, quite a story bot. In any case, all men need testosterone to have sex drive. It is very hard for a man to engage in sex without sex drive, and I'll give you one exception. One exception is men can have stimulation visually, auditorily, um, by tactile, tactile stimulation, um, which means they can feel it or somebody is stimulating them to try to get them in the mood. All of those things can bypass sexual desire. So that is something that I'm using as an exception. So if a man, a normal guy usually has normal testosterone, and usually they, you guys have desire more than we even have because you have 10 times the testosterone we have. So you have this kind of desire all the time. If you don't have testosterone, then you can engage in the process of having sex through stimulation, even without the desire, because your brain then follows the stimulation. So it is possible to work around um, that. Now, an erection requires testosterone because testosterone goes to the pelvis and causes your blood vessels to dilate by releasing um, nitric oxide. So the arteries dilate because they, they are stimulated by testosterone to release nitric oxide. That causes the uh, penile tissue to fill with blood from the arteries and not drain the blood with the veins. So what we see is an erection, and that is very vascular. Now, we can work around testosterone in this, in this part of the um, sexual uh, experience by using Viagra or Cialis, which also releases nitric oxide. Now, that is very possible to do that without testosterone. So there are men without testosterone that can still have an erection. They don't have sexual desire, however, but they can still perform. Then uh, there are some men that don't take that, but they take prostaglandin injections. That can also cause blood flow to the pelvis, and that can also recreate an erection. In some circumstances, not very many, implants can be placed so that you can have you can have sexual intercourse without having an erection, basically. And that's only in, in unusual cases. However, let's talk about sex with testosterone in men who have good sexual blood, or good blood flow and good sexual desire. They don't need medication. The first ingredient is, if you're just thinking about this, is desire. It's usually always there in men who are young and healthy and have plenty of testosterone. It becomes a little less common in as men age. Not always secondary to testosterone, but they've got other things on their mind. Um, <clears throat> the other necessary ingredient, ingredient is stimulation. Stimulation can be anything. It can be any type of stimulation. Sometimes it's just thinking about sex. Um, messages that are going from your brain, just thinking about sex, can also stimulate an erection. So that doesn't have to be, you don't have to have physical stimulation. It can be your brain causing you to have an erection. Sometimes it's hard not to have an erection for young men because they've got a lot of that thought process going on and a lot of testosterone. Um, <clears throat> at the point of Stimulation causing an erection, people can have sex, they can get to the point of almost having an orgasm, almost ejaculating, and they can change course. It doesn't always go from having stimulation and then having an orgasm and having ejaculation and, and then resting. It can stop, change position, change direction, change something, the phone rings, whatever, and you can come back from that without going through the whole process again. 
because you're halfway there. That's why this is not just a step one, step two, step three, step four. There are other, there are other pathways to having an orgasm. So if you then continue to have a stimulation and an erection, the third step is the preparation um, for an orgasm, which is usually, you usually have some kind of pre-ejaculate, um, it's like a slippery fluid, it's, pre it's uh, mostly at, used as a lubricant, your body makes it as a lubricant uh, for intercourse. And that comes before ejaculation and before orgasm. Then there's kind of a loading of the semen. Semen sits in the semi um, <clears throat> seminiferous tubules, and it gets ready to uh, come through the urethra. And there's kind of a loading, kind of a feeling of fullness that occurs. That's what I'm told. And as that happens, you almost hit the point of no return. So the, I'll say the gun's loaded, and and your fingers on the trigger, and basically, right at that point, you will have ejaculation and orgasm at the same time. Your brain is involved. If we put you in an, uh, if we put a man in an MRI, we'd see his brain light up everywhere. Also, the the body is obviously um, involved as the ejaculate comes down. There are uh, muscular muscular contractions that push the sperm out so that it can actually, the whole purpose of this was procreation in the beginning, um, <clears throat> and so that it can get into the vagina and can actually fertilize an egg. Now, we all, ha we all know that we have sex when we're not trying to have babies. However, this is what this system was built for. And at this point, there are multiple muscle kind of contractions that cause the sperm to shoot out. That and the brain usually happen together. Now, some men don't ejaculate, especially as older men. That's okay. They still can feel the orgasm. They may not have any fluid come out, but they still are finished with the process and their brain is still has still been covered or filled with endorphins which makes them feel good and relaxed and that's the aftermath so you still get the feel good all of that you don't have what most people need to procreate which is the ejaculate but that's always not always necessary because we're not always trying to procreate. So medical science has been able to help sexual desire by giving people back testosterone. They've been able to um, increase the ability to have sex by giving a man Viagra or Cialis. They've even figured out how to make a, a penis erect that won't become erect because of diabetes or damage to the blood vessels by using an implant, but they have never figured out how to make more ejaculate. Maybe that's the next, that's the next frontier, but they have not been able to do that, and I don't have a good answer for that. I do have an answer for people who don't make a lot of ejaculate or don't make any, things they should avoid, because there are certain things that can decrease the ejaculate. One is dehydration. Many men that I talk to who have this problem are working outside, playing golf, sweating, they're dehydrated, they don't get their electrolytes back, and their tank is empty. They're not gonna have they're gonna have trouble having an erection too, because they need blood flow. So you need to rehydrate, you need your you need your electrolytes before you can be effective. Um, some people are on Sudafed or uh, ADD medicine or any kind of stimulant that causes blood va vessel um, constriction, that affects both the erection and the ejaculate. It will decrease the ejaculate. Some people are on antihypertensive drugs, even blood pressure drugs that decrease your blood pressure. That can also affect both the erection and the ejaculate. 
and diuretics limit ejaculate as well because it dries you out. So if you don't drink enough water, drink too much coffee, uh, you're dehydrated, basically, or you drink too many Coca-Colas or, or um, Diet Cokes, then you may not have enough fluid to have a good ejaculate. Or if you have ejaculation over and over again within a 24-hour period, the first one will be fine, the second one will be less, the third one will be next to nothing. I mean, you run out of it. You have to have some time to, to, to reload. So basically after this whole process and everybody's happy, blood leaves the penis, the penis becomes less tumescent and smaller, um, and there's a muscle relaxation that occurs throughout your body. This is all from your brain, believe it or not. This is, is a, a connection between the pelvis and the brain. It happens with women as well. It's like a symphony or, an, or a beautiful song. Basically, it can take many different pathways, but it can end up with everybody feeling gratified, happy, relaxed, and that's what it's supposed to do. You're supposed to feel like that afterwards. It should not be work. Sadly, because doctors are doctors and we're supposed to be scientists, we try to, we try to make this whole process really black and white, and I'm saying it's not. It's different for every single human. I can't give you the variations of the things that my patients have told me. There's, there are so many. Everybody has a different pathway to the end, but most adults are orgasmic and have had, have had, men have had orgasms and ejaculations, women have had orgasms, some have ejaculations, believe it or not, but that's a whole different, that's a whole different uh, health cast. I just want you to understand the process. If I, had, if I had some bots and a cartoon, I could do it better. <laughs> but here I'm going to have to just draw you this picture and make you understand that if you're different than what I described, then be happy you're different. As long as you can achieve orgasm, great. There are different pathways to the, the end point. This is a God-given thing, but it's also a... It's also a necessary biologic function for us to have babies. But after we're done having babies, we can just enjoy it. So I hope this helped you with some understanding of what men go through if you're a man or if you're a woman, what, what your partner is going through. And so to help you understand their struggles, your struggles. Women, for us, it's not always gratifying, but it's always easy. We don't, have to, we don't have to perform. We can always function if we have enough estrogen and some testosterone. So please join us again next week. And we won't be talking about this again, but we may be talking about women and uh, giving you some ideas about our inner workings of the sexual experience. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.